Hello, everyone, and welcome to this month's Tips and Tricks call. My name is Tim Sessions, Director of Client Services, and I'm excited to present to you a couple of fun things today that will hopefully get your brain going and you can see different ways to implement some of these features that we have here at Audience. So I'm excited to do that and I'm excited that you've carved out some time today to join today's tips and tricks call. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it. Let's take a look at the agenda. For you veterans here, you know what to do. You got the enter, oh, I don't know why that says active auto sweepstakes, that is on me. The audience sweepstakes, we are still ironing out a few things from the name change here. So anyway, thank you, Ryan. He's thrown the link in the description or in the chat there to enter. Um, something to note though, when you hit step three, you're gonna note, you're gonna see a bonus entry for confirming that you registered for today's tips and tricks. So if you don't click that button, you're gonna miss out on 10 extra entries. You may have seen that we launched our tips and tricks giveaway early yesterday. Um, it is a once total entry, but you'll be brought to step three where you will be able to get some additional entries. So don't miss out on those extra entries there. Of course, at the end of this, we have a survey feedback form. We would love for your opinions on these tips and tricks calls. Um, so it takes a couple of extra seconds to, to do that. We definitely appreciate the feedback. Uh, we'll be talking about a little bit about the Pro Football Challenge. Um, I want to show you some quick and exciting updates, and then we are going to get into the meat of today's topic, which is short codes. Of course, if you have a question at any time, feel free to ask that. Now, the place to ask the question is in the Q&A section of this webinar. Um, if you ask it in the chat, then a lot of times it just goes to the panelists. We won't have a chance to display your question uh, for everyone else to see and reference. Uh, your question is probably something that somebody else has a question about too. So utilize the Q&A section there. And then of course, we are going to draw a $100 gift card to Amazon winner. So. Let's talk about the Pro Football Challenge. Uh, our national campaigns director, Jay, made me promise him that I would let you know that tomorrow is the last day that you can sign up for the Pro Football Challenges. We actually are offering two. So I just wanna cover that um, on today's call. So if you're confused by that, hopefully this will clear a couple of things up. With the Pro Football Challenge, this is the one that we've actually been running for years. You know it, you love it. Uh, it's a great opportunity to tie in some sponsors or just receive some local engagement. But entrants will be challenged to pick the winners of every 2022 to 2023 regular season Pro Football game for a chance to win $50,000. Now that $50,000 prize would go to someone who picks a perfect season. So that is a prize that is sponsored by audience, uh, something that you can piggyback off of. If you just want to run the Pro Football Challenge and not you know, tie in the $50,000 prize, then that is completely up to you, uh, but it is available to use it. The Pro Football Survival Challenge. Now this one does not have an audience prize associated with it, but the way that it works is entrants will pick one team to win their game each week in this double elimination challenge. If their team wins, the entrance moves on. If not, they're knocked out. So you get two chances to progress and it's kind of the last man or last fan standing. Um, and a question that came up that I had that I just want to clarify on this call is that after week two, or actually um, pre-registration is important on this one because we will lock it. Obviously, after two weeks, um, people shouldn't be able to make picks if they didn't sign up initially. So this one's kind of like our, our basketball madness where after the the game start, you're locked out if you didn't get a chance to, to sign up there. So this one's just a fun one to try. Uh, we're gonna be doing it internally and I'm excited to see how it goes. 
You can get more information about these at ideas.aptivata.com. Now that one is not a typo. Uh, we're still converting several of our URLs over to the audience.io, but currently ideas.aptivata.com is where to take a look. And let me show you what that looks like um, in case you're not familiar with our idea studio. So if you take a look here, you'll see it right on the landing page, our pro football challenge, click that. If you're an uh, audience customer, you can sign up here um, and then you'll have a chance to register. Now registration for these do close again um, tomorrow. So if you're on the fence, now's the chance to sign up. Again, that's at ideas.audience.io. All right, moving along here, let's get into something very exciting with this quick update. As you know, on the tips and tricks, I like to let you all in early on updates um, before we either announce them or release them. Um, this one is currently live. Uh, it was actually released this morning, but it's a survey poll quiz UX design. So let's take a look at what some of the, the changes are. It's a redesign here. So same app, new look, new quiz survey and poll redesign designed to increase engagement um, and some design updates here. So you can see on this screenshot here, we have the new look and the old look. We've made this very mobile friendly. Um, we've cleaned up the titles. If you take a look at the old example there, you'll see that um, the title of the campaign is overlaid on the header image, which looks terrible. And so with this new update, we put the um, the title of the survey quiz or poll down below with some nice modern uh, stylization of that header and uh, you're good to go there. Uh, jumping into the desktop version, now you'll just have to imagine this skinned with your websites but uh, it's a nice, clean, rounded edge look here. Um, you know, we, we, we definitely wanted to consider um, what looks the best. And you can see in this example, you know, with or without an image at the top, what these are going to look like. But where this really shines and where most engagement takes place is on mobile. So again, here's a couple of more examples of the old versus new, old on the left on this left panel and new on the right. Um, just a lot more clean design and an experience for the end user there. So um, we'd love to hear what you think about that. If you if you wanna throw that uh, in the chat, if you, if you like the new design, here's another example of the tile layout here. Um, if there's no, image for the specific question, then it doesn't display anything at the top. Uh, whereas in the old version, again, you'd get that kind of jumbled look that you see on the left-hand side. If there is an image, then uh, you can see <laughs> the uh, funny image there at the top of what do you do after a breakup. Um, but yeah, that is a quick uh, UX uh, redesign of the surveys functionality is there. Features are all staying the same. We just wanted to clean it up, make it more mobile friendly. And um, yeah, go ahead and jump in. If you have access to the surveys, go ahead and play around with it. Uh, but we're really excited about that push there. And you all are the first to hear about. Um, great question. I'll go ahead and uh, let uh, Ryan or Jay, who are on the call to answer questions, we'll go ahead and let them uh, answer those that are coming in. Um, so again, that's in the Q Q and A uh, portion of this webinar. All right, let's jump into the meat of the tips and tricks here. What are short codes? Um, well. The definition that I came up with and wrote out is it's a placeholder code. They're placeholder codes that are replaced with real data when a campaign is live and front facing. So why should we use short codes? Well, um, there are several reasons and this is probably not limited to the three that you see up on the screen here, but it's to speed up campaign creation. 
ensure correct data is added to the right places throughout the campaign and for syndication and distribution. Now, if you're still confused by what short codes are, then we have a couple of examples uh, here, and then I'll jump into the platform on how you can utilize short codes. Uh, but they're pretty straightforward. This is more of an awareness webinar. So you can add short codes to your terms and conditions to overlay boxes, confirmation emails, form fields, thank you text. And I stole this from MasterCard, but anywhere short codes are accepted. Or is that Visa? I can't remember. But anyway, you, you all probably remember those old commercials there. Okay, so here's some examples. Shout out to Salem for this example here. This is using it in their terms and conditions. You can see that the short codes are added to a screenshot of their terms and conditions. So in the top is what it looks like on the back end, and at the bottom with the underlines there, it might be kind of small on your screens, but you can see how it's taking that data or where those short codes are placeholders and inserting them into the terms and conditions. Now, in this example here, this is great. Um, maybe Salem uses templated rules on every single one of their campaigns. So these short codes can be, um, or these terms and conditions can be reused each time um, there is a new campaign here. So it's gonna pull in the app start time, app start date, end time, end date, sponsor, company, all that, all that good stuff there. Um, Here's another example, shout out to iHeart on this one. They're using it in an overlay box. So with this one, um, they're pulling in the account company and on the live side, then it's pulling in FM 106.1. And uh, you can see that when this is distributed down to stations, then it's gonna pull in that station company name um, each time this is live on the front end here. Here's an example. You might all be familiar with this example because I utilize it in the entry confirmation email that you receive um, when you enter to win the $100 gift card. Um, and this one was, I believe I used this on another short code example uh, a while back. And so I utilized it here. Um, and you can see, again, this is in a confirmation email. So it says the winner will be announced on today's date around 1 p.m. I just have that set to be at the app end time. Um, as you all know, though, we usually wrap these up around 12 and 30. That's why I put the approximate time there. So again, that is in a confirmation email. They also work in the subject line as well of the confirmation email. So if you're to use a short code there, you can, uh, it will pull that in when that gets sent. Uh, you can also use this in form fields. So in this example, I have the setup screen, screen of the Twitter follow, and this is pulling in our audience username um, into the Twitter handle there. So you can see that uh, on the left side, that's the setup screen. On the right side, it pulls in the, the username information on the form field there. And then lastly, again, another shout out to, to Salem here. They're utilizing one of the more complex short codes. At the bottom of their thank you page, which is step four on the form, you'll see that there's the account link, uh, URI, and it's pulling in their content slash members page. And then the text is click here now. And then on the live side, you can see all it is, is that nice hyperlink to click here now. It's gonna take them over to the slash content members page of that specific account where this short code is utilized. So let's uh, take a look at how we can add custom short codes and also where to implement these within the dashboard here. So let me uh, pull up the dashboard. Bear with me just one second as I jump into the audience platform here. So. Anyway, if you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to reach out. We do have Ryan and Jay standing by to answer those. It looks like the, the one got answered there, but let's go ahead and um, take a look at the dashboard. So we're looking at the campaign um, that you all entered to win the $100 gift card. Now, where do we find the short codes? Anywhere that there's a WYSIWYG editor, and if you're not familiar with that term, that stands for what you see is what you get. 
But if you click on more settings, you're gonna see some icons here. So for instance, this short code icon on the fine print field, I can click that and it's gonna pop up a screen of all the different short codes that I can utilize. So this will begin to look familiar to you all here. So if I want to add the promotion start time into my fine print, I can click insert. And as you can see, now that short code is inserted into the fine print. Now, this app start time is referring to the start time that is part of the schedule. And we can also do, uh, you know, start time, start date, end time, end date. Um, all the different login methods that a promotion uses. I'm not gonna go through all these. I encourage you all to kind of come in and explore these and um, take a look at what your options are. But you can see that we have some preset short codes that can be placed anywhere that text is um, added within a campaign. So you, got, you can even pull in the account logo source, the account logo image, um, all sorts of information here. But then we also have these custom short codes. But before I get into that, I wanna show you a, a few tips and tricks, that's why we're here, on how to insert these into, let's say, form fields. So, you know, if I click on a form field, I don't see that short code logo on here where I can actually insert that specific short code. So let's look at my example on step three with Twitter. So you can see I've placed those short codes um, in the setup page of the Twitter follow form field. Well, what we want to do is we actually will jump into an area where we know that that short code icon is. Then we can scroll down to our Twitter username and then you'll see you have that nice copy icon here. I can copy it and then place that somewhere within my form fields. That's, so that's how you would insert these into form fields. I have it in the header. Um, I also have the Twitter handle. What's nice about this is if you create, you know, you set up your short codes or your custom fields for um, all your Twitter accounts, then we, you know, using the short codes that can pull in that account's Twitter information into that form field. So if you're setting up contests at the top level and syndicating it down, then it's gonna look at each one of those accounts, different short codes and uh, pull in the information from that account, but it has to exist first. So let's talk about that. Um, so some of the information that we pull from are company details. So I'm gonna click on my, uh, my initials down here in the bottom right information and click on profile information and take a look at account details. So I have some mi missing information. So if I wanted to use a short code for the company subtitle or call letters or even address, then the short code wouldn't have anything to pull from. Um, I did mention you can pull in a logo there. That's where you can update um, a PNG to be pulled in via short code. But you wanna make sure that your account details are complete if you do anticipate using short codes for any of this type of information. Um, if we jump into custom fields, this is actually where we can set up our custom short codes. Now there again are a few that um, are already uh, preset here. So our YouTube subscribe, Facebook page, uh, Twitter username, Instagram username, and so forth. We can. We can add all of that, but you can also create your own custom field. So um, if we wanna create a slug called Tim's, let's say, uh, we'll just make it easy. Tim dog name, then I can then put my dog's name in there, click submit. And now if I wanna use that for some reason, in a contest, I know I'm jumping around here kind of quick. Let's jump into step four here. And let's go ahead and throw in my dog's name. Go ahead and insert that. For some reason, maybe this is important to this giveaway. Let's go ahead and preview it. I'm gonna jump to step four. I believe I can do that quickly. Audience.io, and just so you know, I do not qualify for the giveaway. Just using this as a preview here. So let's jump to step four. 
there you go. It's pulling in my dog's name <laughs> in step four of the contest. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it to setting up short codes. You have it, again, you have a ton of options. Let's kind of review those when I click into this here. We have, uh, you know, your promotion start time, promotion information, uh, child account information, if you need to pull that in um, for any reason, account IDs, companies, um, all your account information that you want to pull in here. Um, and then, of course, all of the short codes, the custom short codes that you want to create. Um, one example that I'm aware of is pulling in, you know, maybe you have a streaming URL if you're a radio station and you want to pull in that streaming URL. This is a syndicated contest. And as you syndicate it down, you know, you can hit step four and say, okay, thanks for entering. Now listen to station XYZ's stream. People can click that and listen in, or you can set it up for bonus entries or something along those lines. So jumping back to kind of the recap, you know, why should we use short codes? Again, it speeds up uh, contest creation, especially if you're pumping out a bunch of different contests and you don't want to re-enter the same data. Um, it's great for creating hosted contests and syndicating that down. It's going to pull in the child account station and in, uh, company information in that regard. And then, of course, it's ensuring that the right data gets put in the right place um, when these contests go live. So if you have any questions about short codes, do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, we are here standing by ready to um, answer those questions. Of course, we have a great customer uh, success team that is ready to, to um, help you get those set up. So it looks like we have a couple of questions here um, that have been answered already. If you have any other questions, again, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. And at this point, I'm actually going to stop the recording here and we are going to jump into the giveaway portion of this call.